out you just might find this interesting. This is a brand new guitar shipped from the factory directly to me to set up for a customer. And what do they have in here? But Christmas paper, old Santa Claus. Ho, 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 it says. Have no idea what it's going to look like. Uh oh. I'm not too happy with it already, I can tell you that. Look at the uh, bridge area there. Wow. I literally just opened this up. I have not seen it myself. This is the first look I've taken it. All this finish is pulled up around the bridge here. That don't look good at all. Wow. Bummer, man. Okay, looky here. This is damaged to crust here. Not good. Wow. There's there, even something spilled on it right here. I mean, gee whiz, I just opened this up. It's just crazy. Oh my gosh, what's up with this up here? Look at this. Maybe there's an explanation. Maybe this is some kind of a factory second or something and you got a good deal on it. I don't know. There's no nut. Truss rod functions, bridge fit. So maybe there's some kind of a explanation. Here's a note inside. I don't know if this is it's got it's a Christmas card. It's got Noel on it. Thank you for thank you for your purchase. Here is a coupon for 10% off our website. That's got nothing to do with anything. Okay, well I'll have to figure this out and get back to you. It is a fender wreck at this point. I don't know uh, where we're headed with this. Well, it's been a few days since this fender came in. I was getting caught up on other instruments and stuff, so we're about ready to tackle it now. I believe I showed all the things in a prior video that are wrong with it. it obviously somebody rejected it because they uh, carved the fender off the peg head. The uh, nut is area is messed up there. It didn't even have a nut. The bridge, it, this looks real bad. The finish is pulled up all the way around here. I could slide something onto the bridge, I'm sure. I haven't tried that, but I'm just sure I can. And it's also busted around here. We're going to start with the easy thing, and for me, that's this. We're just going to open this up and glue it back. Um, it's a uh, plywood uh, sides, I can see by looking in here. I'm just going to run an X-Acto knife through there a little bit just to knock anything loose out. I don't think there's any worry with that old glue or anything like that. That doesn't look like that's an issue. It looks like you can see the wood pretty, pretty clearly. But uh, anyway, we'll just clean that out a little bit and, and get going. I can see the end of one brace is uh, stuck down here to the side. It's kind of loose from the back. I'll get glue back in there real good. When I clamp this down, that should fix that too. So we'll, uh, we'll work on that all at the same time. The way I choose to fix something like this is I make it as easy on me as possible. So I've got it, the crack wedged open so I don't have to fight that. I've got the clamps adjusted to about the right thickness across here. They may not be just exactly right, but they're close. And now I'm just going to squirt some glue in this little plastic lid here and uh, I'll just paint it in there with a brush is the easiest way for me to do it. Um, you could inject it in there and stuff, but this just is practical and easy. I can reach in there and get it where I want it. All right, I believe we've got good coverage in there now, so going to uh, pull out the wedges and clean off the excess. Now we just need to clean up the extra glue squeeze out and we're good. It's been 24 hours. The, uh, I'm sure this joint is plenty hard and dry so we're going to take the clamps off here and see what we ended up with. I think we're fine. 
A little bit rough, but uh, we can knock that down a little bit. Uh, overall, it, it matched up real good, though. I'm just feeling uh, the rough, like little pieces of glue and stuff like that, but we can knock all that down. Otherwise, I think it's perfect. The bridge on this should not be intimidating to me as I've done hundreds of these things over the years. However, this one is intimidating and for the simple reason that it's obvious it's glued to the finish and it's obvious it's pulled the finish up around here. How do you fix that? I mean, you know, I can take it off and it's just going to leave a big nasty scar here and you know, I don't have a finish that's going to match this old satiny looking finish that's on here, although maybe I could find something and, and put on there, but, you know, no matter what I do, it's you're going to see it, but uh, I guess, regardless, it's got to be fixed. I'm going to look in here and see where these dots are, see if I can feel anything. I do not feel any bolt or anything there. However, I can tell that those dots are pretty much exactly on top of these X bracing. And it would not surprise me if there's not a screw or something down through there. But uh, I can't feel anything from the inside. I think this pick guard looks like it's coming loose too. It's a really thick pick guard. It's three layers thick. It stands up uh, dang near an eighth of an inch higher than the t top of the guitar. Let's just measure that and see how high that is. It's kind of unusual to see a pick guard stand up quite that high. Hundred thousandths, hundred and two thousandths according to that. So like I said, it's it's pretty tall. Yeah, right at a hundred thousandths. So uh, that's a really thick pick guard. <laughs> to me, that's kind of awkward. It's uh, kind of, I think it almost can do as much harm is good it, when it sticks up that high. What I think I'm going to do, because of that bridge down here being intimidating to me, I think I'm going to start on the peg head. And that would actually be the most intimidating to most people, I have a feeling. And if I had any sense, it would be to me too. But I don't have any sense. So what I'm going to do, I think, is make a very sharp cut line right straight across here and I'm just going to put some kind of cap above this uh, it just in a straight line and maybe just plain black it probably won't match but it's sure gonna look better than having this all scratched out that's all dished in here by the way I don't know if you can tell that on video or not but that's down in there pretty deep so um, we'll just do something to cover that up I'm sure it will reduce the value greatly, but I'm going to remove the Chinese export sticker from the back of the guitar here. Uh, no point in giving them any extra credit. Well, I thought I was going to remove it. I thought it would just peel right off, but obviously whenever you start thinking, you're in for trouble. Here we go with the lighter fluid. Man, that's a lot harder sticker to get off than I thought. I, I really thought that would just peel right off. <laughs> like I said, anytime I start thinking, I'm in trouble. It's cutting it, but it isn't overly excited about cutting it right off of there, I can tell you. It is gone. Well, that was easy. The reason I even turned it over was to punch out the uh, ferrules, that are this, the post ferrules, and I'm hoping they'll come out without giving me trouble, like peeling off the finish. I wanted them out of the way so I could route this across here really easy. I wanted it flat, but uh, I can already tell they don't feel like they want to come out of there. I'm afraid they're going to be stuck to the finish. Hmm, bummer. None of them feel like they want to come out at all. Very tight. Well, that just made that start to get a little more imposing. I'm afraid if I knock them out of there, I'm going to knock out the finish. I just almost feel that coming.
but it would be very hard to do what I need to do without getting them out of the way. And that's got a real sharp point on that. That's what I usually use, but I don't usually have a real sharp point on the other end. I think I did that for some reason. Let's see if it came out. What did it do to the finish? No problem. Thank goodness. Two for two. I think I'm going to have to take out at least the first four here. That one just came out on its own. Now it changed its mind. That one's not coming. Okay, there's all four of them. That leaves me a nice flat area there for routing purposes to get this routed flat across here. I believe I have a straight edge on here close enough that uh, I can uh, route this a nice straight cut across here. It basically the cut's just going to come just barely below, uh, right at the highest part of this deform here, I guess you'd say. Anyway, I'm just going to cut a straight line right across there. Okay, I believe we can work with that. Now we've got a nice straight line there. This idea probably won't set well with most people, but when you can't match something exactly. Now, you know, another option, let me just back up. Another option would be to just take this all the way off and, and put a whole new thing on there. But that's a lot of work too, because then you got to drill all these holes, you got to do a lot of other things, and you got to refinish it and all that. So that's a good option, and it would be, a, if this was a high dollar guitar, I would do that. But this is not a high dollar guitar. So here's another option, and what I'm going to try to do instead of trying to match it because it will never match and it'll always look like a mistake instead of trying to match it I think I'm going to try to match the body so this wood here matches the body and I think I can stain it where it'll match the body real well and then we'll just cut this profile in it after we get it glued in here I've got the grain going straight and um, we're going to thin it down to approximate thickness for this and uh, then we're going to glue her on here and stain it and call it good. It's starting to look pretty decent, I think. Um, yeah, obviously you can tell it, but uh, I think once it's glued on there, cleaned up and stained to match the body, it's going to look like maybe it was even intentional, you know, rather than an accident. So that's, that's what I'm going for, and uh, hopefully that'll work. To me, it's important on this to not over glue it. In other words, get a very, very thin layer of glue all around it. And the reason for that is that otherwise it will um, be hard to get it to clamp down and match the thickness. Um, if you get too much glue in there, it'll want to stay proud of the surface. And I really want it to match the thickness as close as I can. I'm putting glue on this very edge too so that the edges will match up and seal any little cracks or fill any little cracks that are in those areas. Here we go. Yeah, that looks good and I think it's going to work fine. Now I'm just going to clean up the extra, extra glue and get some good clamping on that. Just showing you how I clamped this up. I intentionally left this joint exposed so that I could make sure it stayed tight. I clamped it up real tight, got quite a bit of squeeze out, cleaned all that up as best I could, and now we're going to let it sit for several hours uh, and then we'll move on from there. This veneer has had several hours to dry. I'm just going to touch it lightly with this 400 sandpaper.
All right, I'm gonna see what it looks like with a little light brown dye on there. It's called light brown, but it looks pretty dark, actually. Doesn't look great, but it doesn't look near as bad as it did, you know? So It's quite an improvement over where it was, so I'm tempted to just take and spray a lacquer over this whole surface. I'd have to pull these extra things out, and that way I can blend it in, and I think it'll look just fine that way. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I put a lot of coats of uh, sanding sealer lacquer on this and uh, it's still not really sealed but I think I've done as much as I'm gonna do I mean it just you know you if you've ever used lacquer it just sinks in sinks in sinks in sinks in it just never quits and uh, I've probably put seriously 15 coats on this and it's still sinking in so I'm just going to go ahead and sand her off the best I can and buff it out a little bit and call it good. I've got the dishwashing soap, uh, water and soap here and uh, I've got 600 to start with and we're just going to see what we can do about leveling it out. I'm pretty sure it won't be perfect but you know at this point you got to cut your losses. It's uh, you can only spend so much time on on one uh, especially when you know you're not really doing a you know this is more or less a budget job the uh, soapy water if you I think I've mentioned this in other videos I was a friend of mine who does a lot of body work mentioned that you put dishwashing soap in the water and it really does keep it from sticking to your sandpaper the uh, what's coming off of here Without the soap, it just uh, builds up on your sandpaper and you don't get anywhere. But it really does a good job. You can see it's very clean. It's, it keeps it keeps it clean. All right, let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. It's better than I was expecting, but uh, we'll uh, give it a little bit more of a go with the 600 and then we'll move into a different grain. Okay, I think we're gonna move up to the 1200 now. Well, that's what she looks like on the final. And, uh, you know, it's not great, but it sure beats having a big hole up there where the fender, the word fender was knocked out. Now we've gotta go to this mess here and try to give you a good idea of just what we're dealing with there. You can see that the finish has peeled up all the way around here. I just think this is going to be ugly. And I don't know what else to do about it. But I'm pretty sure we got to take it off because I can see it's lifted all the way through here. Just trying to re-glue it in place, I don't think it's going to work on this. And it's going to leave some scarring, but it just is what it is. Just thought I'd show you that you know I just took this blade and went under here and it just goes right under there you can go right under the bridge quite a ways under there and uh, it's loose all the way across the end I can see it poke all the way through I'm sure it's the same way down here yeah I can see it poke all the way through here so it just has to come off it's glued to the finish the finish is just going to continue to chip on off the rest of the way I'm not just sure if I should just go ahead and pop it up because I have a feeling the finish is just going to pop off with it. Or if I should uh, heat it up first. Because I don't think we're separating any glue and I don't know if that heat's going to help the finish come off better or not. But I think I'll try some, try some heat first and then we'll see where we go from there. I've got the heat on here. I'm going to heat up the knife as well. We'll see if that'll help it come loose any better. Yeah, it does. It's, I can feel it. It's uh, gotten a little bit soft. 
but not quite soft enough, unfortunately. I'll try that again. That, that definitely softened it. I could feel it. Okay, well, this will be number two. We'll give it a second try here after applying heat again. And see if we can get any further. It's doing something. I can, I can see it going through there. Wow, I think we popped her loose. Yeah, and uh, wow, look at that. They had uh, location pins here. Um, those are not where the where the dots are. Those are just extra pins to locate the bridge on there when they glue it down. Of course, they glued it right to the finish, so it is what it is. We'll clean all the finish off and uh, make sure that we don't have any finish under it, and we'll get her glued back on there and see what we can do about touching up the finish. Ordinarily, when I'm taking finish off or glue off the bottom of a bridge, I just scrape it and it comes right off. This stuff here, not so much. It's kind of like a, I don't know if it's an epoxy finish or some kind of a fiberglass finish or something, some new tech, high-tech finish, I guess. Um, it doesn't want to come off. The, the best way to get it off that I'm finding is to get right at the edge and chip it off. And so I'm just working it's going to take a while i'm just working around like this and just chipping it off almost almost like i'm chiseling it off um, it's not easy but it doesn't work to just scrape it it i mean it sort of does but it's just i think it's just dulling my scraper is all it's doing I mean, it'll come off that way if I can scrape long enough, I guess. Maybe that's the best. I don't know. Just have to try different techniques. Wow. That stuff is hard. You can see the way it comes off in white flakes. Well, I got the bridge all scraped perfectly clean. It took some work, but I got her done. And uh, now... We've got to turn our attention to the top, and I'm a little more concerned about that because it's quite a mess here, and I don't want to make the top chip out any worse than it is, but we got to get rid of all this white chip out because it's obviously not stuck down, so I don't know. It's not going to be simple, but I'm going to take my sharp X-Acto knife, and I'm going to scribe around here just like I always do, and then I'm going to clean out inside of there, and then we'll see what we can do about this extra white chip out around here. I'm not sure how well you, you can see the scribed line, but it, you know, I do have it cut all the way around the actual bridge. You know, A lot of it's outside of that. Some of it's inside of that. It's just, who knows? It's just going to be different. And... Uh, they definitely glued it right to the finish. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure they used glue. I think they just stuck it to the finish. I'm not going to film all the cleaning here. I'm just going to go ahead and do the cleaning, and I'll bring you back when we're done. thought I'd try to show you what I'm doing outside of my score line. You know, out here, like this finish is outside of my score line, but it's loose. And, you know, I don't think I'm going to get it to stick back down, even with other finish on there. So what I'm trying to do is I just take and lightly score it around that white line like that and around this white line like so. And I'm lightly scoring it because I don't want to get all the way through the finish and hit the top. And then I'm just picking that off of there just to, you know, back to that score line. It breaks off pretty clean. And then I think we can fill it in with other finish and, uh, you know, make it look pretty good. Is it going to be perfect? I doubt it, but uh, I think we can make it look, you know, much better than all this white flaking off stuff. Just a lot of detail. Another spot right here is a pretty big spot. Again, this is outside of the uh, bridge. I'm just scoring a, a very light line in that loose finish. Then I'm just going to chip off the loose part. 
here here's kind of a another situation I mean I've got a straight line across there but yet on the outside of that straight line there's all that loose finish so I think I gotta get rid of it I don't know what else to do I'm trying to do it in a way that I don't create more loose finish and chip up some more of it well we got her pretty well cleaned off um, and all that chipping you know around there we've got most of the loose chipping cleaned off or at least as much as I think I can get off I guess we're ready to glue her back on there clamp her down let her set overnight and then we'll see what we can do about filling in this finish around here you can see we got a lot of squeeze out here we're getting good contact this bridge is carved with, where it's got a very steep angle going backwards so my call is sitting back a little bit like that but that's just the way it is um, gonna keep cleaning up the squeeze out here as I add more clamps it's been 24 hours plus and we may as well take these off and see what we ended up with I'm pretty positive it's in very good shape well it looks pretty good as you can see there's still tear out around there um, you know from the finish but it doesn't look as bad as it did because of all that white flaked off finish and I got rid of all that so I'm gonna ask the customer how they feel about it whether they want me to try to touch up this finish or not because it's kinda of like a budget job to some degree and uh, to see how far they want to go with it you know because I don't want to spend their money unnecessarily you don't really notice it all that bad now um, you know from a distance I mean you can see it obviously when you get up close and look at it so I'm gonna check with them and see what they want me to do about that regarding the fretboard itself it looks good I don't see a problem with it I'm not I'm not planning on doing a fret job unless I look down it and see a problem and as I look down it it looks perfect it absolutely really looks good it really looks flat and plain and everything looks in alignment I think we're about ready to put some tuning keys on this and just to see where we're headed with it I talked to the customer and he's okay with these blemishes around here um, he just basically wants it to be a good playing guitar and that's where we're headed um, again you don't see those very, when you're back away from it you just don't hardly even see it so I don't think that's a big issue uh, I sent him pictures of how the peg head turned out there and he's okay with that um, we've got to make a fix a nut here yet I've got one that actually fits it and I may use that to save a little bit of money I don't believe there's any kind of a uh, cover here and we may have to scrounge up some sort of a cover for the truss rod I went ahead and used his tuning keys that he bought I believe these tuning keys are actually for a uh, classical guitar they have an extra set of holes below this set of holes they're almost covered you can just see the edge of the secondary hole there above the uh, ferrule but it's so minute I thought well to save him some money since he already bought those we'll just go ahead and use them and uh, they look like they're going to be fine so I think that's going to be okay too so now uh, we're just about ready to uh, set it up the only other thing I wanted to fix was there's a hole here where the end pin goes and I think you can actually even see through that hole and see the brace in there <laughs> it looks like what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with a dowel I'm going to have to taper this dowel a little bit fill this hole screw a metal strap button on the end of that and uh, that'll be better I, I can glue this in permanently and that'll be a better hold than trying to fill this with some sort of a large button apparently they maybe drilled this out because they were going to put a pickup in it I don't know um, but there's no pickup or sign of a that a pickup was ever in here so we're just going to fill it and put a strap button on there got a dowel fit in there tight glued in place now we'll drill it and put in an end pin or a strap button looks real good you can barely even tell there was anything going on there okay regarding the truss rod cover I just found some matching mahogany here As a matter of fact I made it out of the very same piece of mahogany and I just shaped it like so now we will dye it and uh, put a little finish on it to match. 
It's going to make a nice truss rod cover there, and that will also tie this piece of peg head into right here. I think it's going to make it look real nice. Just thought I'd show you a little trick on how I'm going to spray that. I've got this lacquer already in my spray gun, so I'm just going to spray it a couple of coats with that. And it's getting late in the day, so I'll spray it a couple of coats yet tonight, and then uh, in the morning I may touch it up and hit it another couple of coats. That stuff dries within 30 minutes, so uh, once we get a couple of coats on there, I think it'll be good to go. While the truss rod cover uh, that I am made is uh, drying, uh, the finished part of it, that is, I'm working on uh, stringing it up here and uh, checking the intonation and action. We got her all uh, strung up and tuned up. Now the action's quite high, so I'm not going to worry about intonation yet until we get the action right. The uh, you can see there, the pick just fall slides in there and it falls right out. So how high is it? Oh, it's about almost twice as high as it should be. So uh, we're going to work on that. I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to go ahead and lower this down to my standard 18 thousandths, and we'll see how it goes. Well, the fender held together overnight. The tuning stayed good. You can see how the peg head turned out there with the matching truss rod cover. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a budget job. And for a budget job, that's pretty good, I think. And uh, the uh, frets, I didn't actually touch them. They seem to be fine. They look good all the way down through there. It doesn't look like it's been played. I believe it was a factory reject, or at least that's what it appears to be. You know, just to recap all the different things, we took the bridge off, fixed that, put a uh, new, the customer supplied a uh, saddle, a bone saddle and a bone nut, and we put those on and made them fit. Um, so we did all that repair there. We repaired this, uh, actually, uh, it was this edge here. It was all busted around here, all the way from about here to around here, and we repaired all that. And, uh, of course, we repaired that crazy looking peg head that had all that dug out of there. So we did quite a bit of work to it. I even glued back the pick guard last night. Uh, I used some uh, liquid hide glue and stuck that down. Uh, the advantage of using liquid hide glue on something like this is if it doesn't work, you can just wipe it off with water later. So it's not like a big deal. So that's what I used there. Well, anyway, let's see what she sounds like. little silly song that I wrote. person challenged me to write this song. He said he'd been trying for three years to write this song. He said it had to have these words in the first line of the song. And I said, well, what are the words? And he says, have you ever wished you were somewhere else, but when you got there, you wished you weren't? I said, well, that's quite a mouthful. I'll see what I can do. Well, I was on my way home from the jam. It was one mile up to the highway from the jam. Then it was seven miles down the highway to my uh, exit. Then it was three more miles to my farm. So it was 11 miles in total. So by the time I got there, I was finished with the song. Here's how it goes. Have you ever wished you were somewhere else, but when you got there, you wished you weren't? Like the doctor's office or the DMV or somewhere that you work. Well, I guess that's my life story. And if you listen to my sad tale, I'm gonna tell you why I had to spend 10 years in the Tupelo County Jail. You see, I went to the doctor's office, cause that's where my baby worked. And I was fixing to surprise her, so I put on my best shirt. But when I got to the doctor's office, well, it was me that got surprised. Cause there she sat on the doctor's lap, wearing nothing but her big blue eyes. Well, she jumped up and she turned real red, and that was a color I could see. And it was just as well, cause now there was nothing between that old doc and me. Well, I went for my knife, then I thought twice, and I found an old bedpan. And I swung it like mighty Casey, I was aiming for the grandstand. Well, the coroner's report told it all real well, and I was charged with fumicide. That's a combination of the bedpan and old-fashioned homicide. Well, the judge just laughed through the book at me, but then I guess he had a second thought. 
And that was the break in the case for me Cause ten years was all I got Have you ever wished you were somewhere else But when you got there you wished you weren't Well that's my whole life story And it kept me from finishing first Well I guess I'm a victim of circumstance You've heard my sad tale Now you know why I spent ten years in the Tupelo County Jail Yes, I'm lucky I only spent 10 years in the Tupelo County Jail. Silly song, but there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the Fender Factory Reject Functionally Restored. Say that 10 times real fast. Thanks for watching. Blah, blah.